Hi, hi everyone, welcome to Eden's Secret. As usual, this is Karen speaking. Um, I'm going to try and upload a few videos for you um, over the next week or two weeks. Um, I wish I could upload more, but as everyone knows, I'm really, really busy. This is any soap maker's busiest time of year in the run-up to Christmas. Um, I'm getting loads of soap making questions and I just can't answer them because I'm too busy. I'd literally be on all day answering the questions. So just my best advice to anybody that's new and just starting out because the... Um, humidity the temperature the way we work with products it all makes a difference so wherever you are in the world you need to be looking at seeing what works where you are so the best advice i can give you is go out and buy not too many just a couple of soap making books um and each recipe look to see if each recipe has like i don't know say a few different oils in each recipe so say three oils and then the next recipe see if those oils used in that one see if they've got different oils to the to the other recipes in there then you can try out every recipe that are in the books and see which one works best for you and also see which soap you like the best out of them because we're all different some people like very hard soap some people like very soft some people like very strong scents some people don't um and i really 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 think it's important to make soaps that reflect you and your personality obviously i'm all singing and dancing and i i like pink and pretty so i make soaps that reflect my personality if you're earthy and down to earth then look into doing the earthy soaps and the rustic soaps and all soaps are beautiful doesn't matter which style you go for if you're like a hippie sort of person go for more of a hippie hippie style soap um but i do think it's important to reflect your personality and that's because as people i think we attract the same type of people and we're attracted to the same type of people that we are so that's the best advice i can give you there and there are some gorgeous rustic soaps around and earthy looking soaps and when i'm talking earthy i don't mean bland cream and beige and all that sort of thing uh, but there are beautiful colours of the earth, you know, flowers, everything. Gorgeous purples, not purples vivid like I use, but like a dusky sort of purples. So, um, yeah, just buy a couple of books, try every recipe, try insulating them, try not insulating them and just see what you like, you know, see if it turns out how you like it and what you envisaged and I, I think it's important that we all try and just do something a little bit different right so back onto my soap so this one um i haven't shown you this for a long long time uh this is garden of eden and as you can see we've got the real rosebuds in there um and this is a beautiful floral and it's quite heady and very it has a very very warm smell to it and a lot of florals and so this one the scent description is it's sensual and full of character and starts out with stargazer lilies, neroli and orange blossom with aldehydes. And then we've got pure jasmine and may rose um, entwined with sandalwood and vetiver. So the sandalwood and vetiver is what gives it its very warm, um, warm background. I did use to pipe... Uh, the soap 
onto the top. Oh, sorry. That's yeah. I must get a new tripod. I don't know. I always knock it, don't I? I'm nuts. Absolutely nuts, me. A lot of people have asked about the the soap kitchen. You know how these things work. They always take longer than you think they're gonna. I mean, I was thinking like six weeks, but we've actually had to wait six weeks just for the windows. So we've just had the windows put in. Uh, the electrics are going in at the moment. And the... Um, what's the... Oh, the plumbing. The plumber's been out as well. So we still need to... It all needs plastering. And I think when you plaster, I think you've got to try and leave it for a few weeks to dry out properly. Because if you put the heating on, uh, all the plaster cracks. So it's it's going to be a while yet. And I, I'd love to think it would be. I'd be in there. It goes very, very quiet for me after Christmas, so I probably couldn't move in there before Christmas anyway, because obviously I'll be busy up until the last minute. And then, soap makers get a really fabulous break after Christmas, because it literally goes dead. I mean, it didn't go that dead for me last year. I was actually quite surprised. Uh, but I was still in the shop then. Um... But I'm expecting literally nothing this year. That's really what it's like after Christmas. Just, it's feast or famine in this business. So that's when I always have a bit of a sale, is after Christmas. That's the only time of year I have a sale, by the way. Um... If you have sales all the time, customers will just wait because they know you're going to have a sale very soon. Um, and they won't buy at full price. So I have a, a real sale after Christmas and it's usually buy two, get one free. That's usually what I do. Um, so that'll be in January. And I'm thinking as well, just because of the way the shipping is in the States at the moment, uh, if you want Christmas presents, I think you really need to be starting to look at ordering now. And I, just because of the way it is over there, it's not here, it's not us, it's not me. Um, I don't know what they're doing with their system at the moment, but... I did send a parcel out last week and it's only taken a week to get there but I'm terrified that if anybody's wanting Christmas presents that, that they're not going to arrive and I literally can't guarantee that so if you do want Christmas presents you need to be looking at ordering them now and I would guess up until the middle of November but I don't know if I would leave it any later than that. Normally, it just takes a week 